Hello, welcome to this week's thought. Uh, it's from Matthew chapter 11, and it's a story about hunger. Uh, it's, first of all, it's about hunger in the belly, but it's also about soul hunger, a type of hunger that most people don't even realise that they have. They know something's wrong, and there's an emptiness inside, but maybe they had never been able to dis- define it before. I'm calling it soul hunger. It's the, the deep soul of our being. The story goes like this from Mark chapter 11. Uh, Jesus is hungry in his belly and he sees a fig tree in the distance, so he's wandering towards the fig tree. Um, And as he's going, he realises there's no fruit on it. And the text tells us there's no fruit on the tree. It's out of season. It's not fig season. But I'm guessing as he's walking towards it, he has an idea for a sermon. A sermon in the shape of a curse. And he says to the fig tree, because you've got nothing here for me to eat, you'll never bear fruit again. Pretty rough on the old tree, which is, well, it has no feelings. But it's a great demonstration uh, of the world that Jesus lived in, the Israel that Jesus was a part of, the religion at the time, and I'm just talking about 2,000 years ago, so the religion of Jesus' time was barren, it was empty, it was oppressive. Uh, it was a domination structure that they lived under, uh, under Rome, under the oppression of Rome, but the people of Israel also lived under the oppression of their own religion. Uh, so many rules and regulations, so many demands, so many expectations. And uh, built into all of that uh, was the fact that the priests and the, uh, the religious leaders were often beneficiaries of stolen property from the peasants of Israel and uh, had great wealth because of that and had left most of Israel impoverished. So they were in desperate situations. And because of that, they were in a state of hopelessness. And when we're hopeless, uh, there's no fruitfulness in our lives. We get curved in on ourselves. We get hopeless for all kinds of reasons. It might be because we're su- suffering some financial difficulties at the time. Or we've been unlucky in love, can't find a, a partner. Maybe we've had a few and they just keep going. and we begin to think that we're unworthy or we have no value. Wrongly, by the way, but we begin to think these things anyway. Perhaps we've been abused in our childhood or in our early teens and we carry the scars of that and so we're angry and hostile towards the world and we want to punish everybody and everything. We want to lay the blame everywhere. Um, We want to lay the blame at those responsible, absolutely, and they're, they're responsible and they ought to take the blame, but... It doesn't always work out that way for us. Sometimes people don't end up taking the blame. And even if they do, even if they're exposed publicly, that doesn't necessarily mean we're healed. It doesn't mean everything's right with us. The damage is done. So how can we possibly be healed from that? Or when we're hopeless, or when we're suffering and we're oppressed for whatever reason, we get curved in on ourselves and we can only see our own needs. And we we fail to see people around us. and We can get very short, very curt, uh, even angry with people around us really easily, even people we love and who love us. And life is just miserable. Well, this is Jesus' declaration to Israel, that Israel is barren, that it's fruitless. And it's fruitless because it's oppressed, because uh, it's been treated poorly. But they're fruitless. Because they're always looking inwards, they're always thinking about themselves. They have no sense of worship within themselves. No sense of worshipping God. And worshipping God is demonstrated through service, through loving others. That's what love means. It's not, love isn't a mushy feeling in our emotions. Real love, genuine love, are acts of service for other people. So here's the thing about being miserable and being inward. If we dig deep within ourselves and we find some courage, and if you're a baptised child of God, look, the Spirit of God lives within you. So all the resources of God are within you. We just need to tap into that and to ask God for help. Ask God to get us out of ourselves and to look outwardly and find ways to serve others. We might find somebody who's suffering like we are, invite them out for a coffee, Offer to sit and listen to them, not not to share stories, 
not to make comparisons between their story and our story that doesn't help you doesn't help them and, and if you've done that with someone else you know it doesn't work for you so don't do it for someone else but just go and listen just be present for them don't try to find solutions don't try overtly to identify their particular story with yours because the differences are always vast similar but vastly different so just listen and if you sit and listen to them you will do them the world of good you know what it's like if you've been hurt we have to keep telling people until it doesn't hurt any longer we need people to listen to us N not to find solutions for us not to make comparisons between their story and ours just listen and if we just did that simple thing we would find we would be doing a world of good for others and for ourselves. we begin to understand how to deal with our own grief as well as help others deal with theirs with their sense of oppression as well and then we might start to realize that we have some gifts that we didn't think were worth much beforehand we have some abilities and talents that we can start to use and share and support and encourage others and the more that we do that the more we begin to come out of ourselves because what happens is we see the look on people's faces when they've been helped when we've done something worthwhile given them something of value of ourselves and we see the joy on their face and we may even receive some compliments and some thank yous for that effort we may have to follow uh, face some opposition at time and some rejection but you know uh, don't give in to that just keep persevering keep asking God for help keep looking for people to be generous and kind to and the more we do that the more we will come out of ourselves and the more we will find that we have the capacity for worship once more for worshiping God being thankful for everything that he's given us uh, for being able to serve him and serve the people that he's given us more and more and, and service by what well, the way it's just another name for love real love genuine love not mushy uh, sentimental love but the real deal active service into the lives of other people when we do this we come out of ourselves and we experience real joy for ourselves because we can see real joy in the lives of others we realize that we're not alone they're not by ourselves that we're part of a flourishing community of broken people all who need our help and who are willing to offer help to us in return what a joyful life that would be if we all took that attitude and we're able to God invites us into it to come out of ourselves and to serve joyfully for the sake of others but also for our own sake to love others and to love ourselves I guess that's how it works have a good week